so I've decided to um, have a go and start Let's see if we can get this um, 1957 Blaupunkt uh, radio going um, I did when I first got it I think I said um, I did show it and I had put power to it it's had the mains lead cut off at some point don't know quite why um, it's got a very short very short little mains lead um, I did put power to it and and it was as dead uh, as anything so um, I think the first thing to do what I do anyway um, I mean this is never going to be a you know I, I don't want to strip the cabinet because it's got that high gloss it's got a lot of scratches and marks on it but we'll try and clean that up a bit and make it as presentable as possible later on um, I think the first thing to do really is to get what I like to do is to get the chassis out of the cabinet and you know that can be um, done in a number of ways on this particular set if we lay it down on the workbench there we can see we've got um, some screws four screws and i think basically with perhaps a little bit unsoldering we'll have to unsolder the speaker wires and one or two perhaps other things i saw there was an earth um bolted i think that would come off though um there or it's screwed on that is uh, one or two other things and it should the whole chassis just should slide out then um interestingly enough um the uh, cabinet has been dated, obviously, by Blaupunkt, of the 21st of January, 1957. So, um, you know, um, a lot of people always like to know dates of sets. So there we go. It was um, manufactured in 1957. So we'll undo these screws and see how we get on. Um, do like a little, I should find a little container to put all the relevant screws and bits and pieces. Um, I noticed one of these feet, one of these feet had broken or come and come and stuck or glued or come and pinned. So that's something there again to look at. It was very wobbly when it uh, stood up the other way. see into this so I hold it like that as I say what I think my best course of action will be is to um, I'll unsolder the two speaker wires off there and we have got I don't know whether I can get through to that screw there or whether it will prise up yeah, it's coming up there's a, a bit of an earth um, I think wire bolted on there um, which really we can leave and we can put back it sits on a bit of tin foil that sits underneath um, on that false bottom so with a trusty old um, Antex soldering on we'll see if we can get these wires off here without doing too much damage to anything else That's our speaker wires um, disins um, dissolded. And we also have like tweeter speakers um, on the sides of this set. So um, that's something else we've got to think about removing. Obviously, I want to take those out to have a look at them because they're very strange. They're just like bits of hardboard, really. Um, so that's if we remember the black goes to the top. Um, Obviously, if you're any doubts when you start restoring anything, and that doesn't matter whether it's a radio or, or to, to a vehicle, to anything, or even something a lot smaller, if you're a bit unsure, it's always um, 
worth taking some photographs of inside the cabinet and where wires go before you start disassembling. Um, I particularly do that on televisions because you can soon um, make your own mistakes and um, obviously that that adds then to um, you think well why isn't this working or was it wasn't it was working better when I did this or didn't do that um, you can always refer back to your uh, said pictures it's very dark in there actually I can't quite see what what's what but never mind we're getting right back and it's flapping about a little bit as well Let's see if we can get on it better there we come that's that one off so I think we can unplug our soldering arm for a minute or two so that's the um, there again it was black nearest the front um, now hopefully um, I think we've got everything and uh, basically our chassis should in theory he says slide out of there it's probably quite stuck down having been you know in there for many many a year and if we're very gentle with that I was hoping that we might find some remnants of the missing knobs but sadly it doesn't look like it um, but never mind um, got a little bit of a strip of plastic there or something I don't know quite where that comes a little bit of rubber which we'll hold on to and um, We'll now move the, um, I'll move that to the side for a minute and um, we'll move the cabinet out the way because we don't want that for the time being. Down there, we can bring our uh, chassis back into view and you could probably see uh, just how dusty and dirty that is the first thing i will do and there's you know um obviously i won't film that is um i'm going to go and blow the dust off outside and uh, go over it with a little paintbrush and then clean it all off obviously um because it's absolutely it's you can see this set has never been i don't think the set has actually ever been out that cabinet um and if we turn it over like that is it going to rest on its of wood there if we need to um, stand it on something there we go you can see um, we've got quite a few oldish looking um, capacitors there um, and um, I have got a new main smoothing capacitor for it so we're back on um, it's, it's another day obviously this video is made over various days it's another day um, I have now um, blown all the dust off the chassis or all, all the seat sitting dust anyway um, and give it a really good tidy up uh, generally um, you know I, I don't go overboard as, as long as it's reasonably clean I'm not one of these people to take everything off a chassis particularly a radio of this age um, say um, so it's had a good all the dust blown off you know um, a good clean up i've pulled the valves out clean around the valve holders um i've also i thought the camera was switched on but it wasn't um unfortunately i have also taken the old um electrolytic out it was a can type uh, a siemens i thought i'm sure that was an original um the red section of the smoothing it's obviously it's electrolytic smoothing capacitor the red section was totally um, um, you know it just was giving me no reading at all it was OC um, it was dead um, the um, yellow section was still roughly intolerance but um, so um, obviously something had broken down there or um, happened to it over the years as they do um, I didn't think it was trying you know I, I don't very often try and some people reform these but in that case it was um, had it um, as I said last time I'm not a fan of tagging um, little 
modern electrolytic so we got one here you know you could tag these under you know certain it probably would be a little bit bigger than that but you could tag new electrolytics underneath um it was a 50 uh, two, 250s um and this is by 385 voltage um so i have um now fitted a new can style 50 50 a double 50 uf uh, smoothing capacitor there that is rated at 500 volts it's because of what i what i had um so it doesn't really matter um i think that looks fine now i don't think it looks out of place i think it's in keeping it's a much better it's all secured it's screwed down to the chassis it's got a nice you know proper capacitor clip on it i did um i don't know how well you'll see this um if we drop that down there and then can i zoom in a little bit closer on that and now I'm not sure how well this will all come out. Um, so let's have a look in relation. It's just in there, isn't it? Um, so, so yeah, um, I just had to cut a very, very small bit of the of the chassis out. So, uh, as I was trying to say, um, there's some guys repairing the footpath outside with a whacker plate and it's making rather a lot of noise, so I had to stop. Um, so, yeah, I fitted the new um, can capacitor and with my little Dremel tool, I just had to cut a, a little, a very small, I mean, it was a very odd angled cut how this one had been fitted. This one had lugs that would... Uh, that would cut into the chassis and then turned over and then soldered um very strange way but i suppose it was speed in those days wasn't it when you were assembling chassis like this still um so i have just cut a little bit of the chassis out so i've got plenty of clearance around my particularly my positive um you know um, lugs on my capacitor there and so the next thing to do now is I shall reconnect that up. I shall resolder that up, and um, we could actually do that now. Um, and um, if I put the soldering on, I'm get it start to get it warmed up a little bit. Uh, by the way, I have to say this is just my take on repairing, restoring a radio. Um, this is how I do it, how I like to do it. I'm not telling anybody how to do it. I wouldn't dream of doing that. There's far more knowledgeable people out there who repair old radios. Um, so I so say this is purely my take on it, you know, and um, that's it's as simple as that. You know, I, I, I like many people make loads of mistakes. So we'll perhaps see some of those as we go along. Um, you know, it. Um, I... Um, had i did do a little bit of electronics training many years ago but obviously this this really predates um what i learned about i mean it's, the valve technology had just about died out um although it still was in use um when i studied electronics a little bit um so um you know one is oh they're off again so i'll have to wait a few minutes so you can perhaps hear the whacker blade again so it stopped again so um so yeah um i'm now going to solder this i've got that capacitor unhooked there because i've checked that one as well and we'll just start soldering these back on you don't need to you know a lot of solder but you want a good you know a good uh, connection there and i'm trying not too much to disturb uh, the original rotation of what where the wire rotation that's that's a made up word isn't it um the root of where the wires came to the old electrolytic capacitor i'm trying to keep them in much the same location um i think you don't want to if at all possible on an old radio you don't want to move stuff too much about basically you want to keep it you know um where it was if at all possible the noise has stopped again for the moment, so um, so I say we're just soldering these tag these wires back onto these tags. Get a nice connection there. Don't think we've got the bottom. 
bottom went on very well there. There again, I just use my old Antec soldering iron. You know, I, I haven't got a solder station or anything fancy like that. I just, you know, um, get on well with that. Um, it's got quite a relatively small tip on it, soldering iron tip, because <laughs> otherwise <laughs> I tend to, when you're all working on a set like this with very um, thin uh, plastic coated wire, it's very easy to touch something. And, you know, you start making a mess of the wire and it looks awful. So. I like a small tip, um, you know, um, just for that reason alone. Um, just going to see if I can get those up a little bit so we're not. That's better. So we're just off the chassis. We don't want to be sitting on the chassis there. So they're nicely fixed on there. So we have our um, negative to sort out there, and um, which I've got a couple of black wires which will come um, round and onto that. And then we want one to that uh, chassis post there as well. So we might have to find a little bit of black wire just to do that. And there we have a little bit of black wire, which will do nicely. A um, little bit of plastic coated wire. Just solder that a little bit more. That soldering iron needs a good clean up again. And that's nicely soldered onto our um, negative there. And then we can just make that, tidy that up, keep it looking as though it was always like that, which looks okay. We have a couple of more um, negative wires to attach then to this, um, which were originally, as they say, on the chassis um, lug of the old original Siemens can. So we'll just solder, re-solder those on. Get my come, get come through the hole, through the side there. There we go. Just let that go off and make sure we're well clear again. Just clean that little bit of wire up there. negative on that <sighs> and there we go that's quite a yeah you know, quite a tidy neat job there we've changed the um, smoothing capacitor there and um, I have got another um, negative to pick up there which was on a lug round this side but we should have to reroute that to another negative point somewhere out we'll have to you know um, either rejoin a bit of wire onto that and, and just route it uh, a little bit differently but that's no problem um, whilst we're here I was looking at this um, kind of almost like a, what you call a stick very old German, there again a Siemens I believe, I, I would think looking at it, electrolytic. And um, if we take it off, we remember it comes on to the end. The thing about the German sets I find is, they only just, um, where are we in re re retrospect to the camera? Yeah, um, they only just, perhaps you won't see that, perhaps won't focus, they only just sort of, um, basically they didn't hook them through uh, any lugs or fold them over, which is quite nice when you're desoldering them, you'll find very often. They're just tagged on. Um, and um, I did try, I did unsolder one end of this and it, it's there again, it's, it's a pretty shot um, 
electrolytic it's a 4 uf uh, 385 volt again and um so um you know i thought i'd replace that and um, how we got i think i've got to look to four out um that's a two that's a two that's a four um this is a four by um 450 volt again which you know is fine um and um, our negative end um and there again well, you'll see that our negative end obviously is pointing um very much to this side here just always make it you know try and keep it in the same roughly in the same location looking tidy and um, so that's replaced that I think these German resistors are very very reliable obviously this is to try I'm replacing these capacitors to try and obviously get the set working and while I'm here and while I'm replacing that smoothing main smoothing capacitor which I knew how it was short circuited or one section of it was or open circuit um so i just thought i would you know continue on um changing these capacitors um if we swing the camera around a bit now come down um so i don't know how this is come going to come out this is my first effort uh doing something you know pretty intense like this so i thought the next capacitor we would uh oh i've got to drop down a bit i'm not more is this one here which is a 0.15 um and um so i thought you know these these capacitors these metal uh jobbies on these german sets i find are very uh, leaky um so i just i just changed them i mean i think you can see this has actually been uh leaking out um of this capacitor so um i've got to reach over now and see if i can so uh, probably if my my apologies if my head comes out in into shot at any time and um can we just get that warm enough to drop this off here see and there it's, uh, it's barely hooked on you know now if you were doing a bush radio say a bush DAC 90 um, of the 50s um, bush seemed to wrap the wrap the <laughs> wrap the capacitors over and over again um, and obviously then it can get quite tedious having to um, just clean the soldering on get quite tedious trying to remove them um, you know you do need some little pliers then and um, and there we go and it just drops off like that so there we go a little bit a little bit of um, heat shrink on either sides My little now I could have cut that a bit shorter, but there again, I've left it, I've measured it to the original one, and um, it's the same, um, comes out in respect to the same as the original capacitor that was there. I'll just come up a little bit. And there we go that's one of our you know and um that's you know the art of replacing capacitors basically it's just a question of going through the set and um i'll do a few more now because i'm sure this is probably getting like watching paint dry for you um uh, I'll, I'll move on and do a few more then we'll come back and i'll show you you know probably doing um a, a few more and um we're moving it closer to you know um having a trial again putting power to the set and see how we get on so i'll continue on anyway uh, so just to cut back in uh, for a few moments and just give you a little progress update um, i um, 
have repl replaced now quite a few of the number of the capacitors around this location. It's coming on quite well. Um, as I say, it's just a question, you know, um, I have got the service data for this set, but I put it down somewhere. Typical old, old um, person thing. I put it down, I put it in a safe place, and now I can't find it. Um, but um, I'm just working my way through I, I, what I like to do when it, when um, normally I would have tried to got a set you know um, some life out of it but um, as I knew the smoothing capacitor was actually no good and I didn't want to run it you know um, and damage any part of it or the transformer um, as I knew that um, I thought whilst I'm doing this I might as well swap the capacitors and uh, what I like to do in a pretty uh, not 100% fail safe but I like to just replace one at a time you know don't take don't snip them all out or unsolder them all out just do one at a time and then replace that one and um, you can't go too far wrong then you can still solder it on the wrong tag or get the tags mixed up um, but you know doing that that's why I say it's so important or really a value to have some video or pictures of the set before you start because you know if you do have problems thereafter you can go back and have a look at that and start to think you know I remember when I did this pie, and you can't see it, but the, I'm sitting next to the pie, um, uh, pie television there, um, which I did a couple of years ago, and it took me a heck of a long while to sort it out. It was in a real state, and um, on that, I uh, tagged a capacitor to the wrong place, and I couldn't understand why, the, why it just wouldn't, you know, um, why I was getting the same fault all the time and slowly I traced it backwards you know and um, found what I'd done so yeah there we go we're working our way through um, um, I'll perhaps eventually when I come up to do these um, we've got some old um, well, you'll see that so up this area we've got some old electrolytics which I think I shall replace um, I mean I, I haven't bought anything I have to say um, I ha I'm not spending any money on this set the part the, the capacitors i'd got i, I had the prop pro, um, the polypropylene ones um you know rated at above above the old ones that i'm taking out actually in voltage ratings um i'd got all this and i'd got the can smoothing capacitor and so it's just a, a little bit of fun to see if i can make this set. it's quite an attractive set and i do like these big german um fm sets um so we'll press on and um, I'll probably, you know, come back and do a bit of live capacitor changing on these. But, um, it, you know, you could soon, the video soon overruns and it can be hours long and you think, oh gracious, you know, this is probably a little bit boring to some people to see me just standing here, you know, sitting here rather changing capacitors. So, yeah, it's going well and, um, you know, um, I'll keep on with it. So, still changing the capacitors here on the, on the chassis, and um, if I tip it down again, perhaps that'll give you a bit better view there. I'm now working uh, up these top ones here. Um, how's that? Um, so I've got a, an electrolytic there. Uh, I've done one under there. Um, which was um, totally the end of the the end of the um, bit had actually come off. Um, so I don't think that was doing an awful lot, to be honest. Um, so we'll carry on. Um, just waiting for the soldering iron to get warmed up again. And we'll take this one off. Um, so it's a question of just getting in there and uh, seeing where that wire is, and just like to the cathode centre of the valve there. That is. So it's quite a clump of solder there to heat up.
there we come, and that's it, we release that. And our other end is we swap hands. It's good if you can be a little bit ambidextrous doing this. Now this is where one has to be careful. One has to, you can soon start to start melting your new capacitors um, if you're not too careful, or melting bits of wire. And that's why I like this quite for these tighter sets. Um, you know, I quite like the old Antec soldering on. Um, And hopefully that will pull through now there and show us what we've got. Yep. So there again that looks very well worn out I think you might say. Um, Large bits like that, but that's got it. It's got it lovely. And so now, positive side wants to come through there and under to that resistor there. we're on I think we've at last cracked it as it is as you can see it's quite a fiddly uh, process um, for sure you know it's um I think it's always trying nice to try and get it as neat as you possibly can as though I mean you know um, on there nicely now so and that's nicely under there and it's nicely soldered onto that center of that valve again so there we go that's um, another one replaced uh, so I finally um, got all the capacitors changed um, or the all the capacitors that I think needed changing I should say I have left some and um, I've just, this very minute, I've just put the soldering iron back. I've just temporarily put a new mains lead on. I haven't plugged it in because I thought I would save that. Um, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to switch it on. I believe the set is set to um, the um, medium wave, um, but we won't worry too much about that because we might not get anything at all. So this is the very first um as I say, power again. I did put power, as I said um, previously. I have tried power, and the set was totally dead. Um, so we might have a default transformer. We might have some duff valves. We don't really know yet. Um, uh, you know, the set could have been put out of service if it went wrong for any reason. Um, so here we go. Anyway, let's plug it in and see what happens. 
oh we've got a light anyway we've got the dark the dark light has come on um and i've got the speaker obviously you should always put this must always never run a set without the speaker attached i haven't got the tweeters but i i don't think they do a lot to be honest but obviously when it's back in the cabinet they will go back on if we successful oh well we're getting something well that sounds certainly more promising i have put it there's no aerial on this set um so obviously i have put an aerial in the back um let's just go up oh i say oh there we go since we last saw them together in the Manchester Derby when it was Malasia and Sean now this is uh, four of the last five that he started so that's exactly what he and, uh, and Gareth Southgate yeah, well, I watched Sean the weekend I'm pretty happy with was, that really there we go um, the they seem to be working let's Wednesday just see if we get anything I think this is um, we all last month, we last month. VHF on the end here so we'll just see whether we get anything Oh, we've got something there. Oh, that's not the right tune, is that? But, you know, you know, just be careful out there, guys. Then be careful. Oh, oh that's Radio that. 2, I believe. Uh, right, now listen, we know that you know, because I've told you, because Simon tells me to tell you, because there I we love go. a bit of Vernon, I also love a bit of well, Nine great dance music. And I'm really pleased like with that. Dance as well, and um, well, it's got quite a good got sound with really. it. I think when it's back in the cabinet the anyway, show for just turn it down a bit, because I should get, dance sound of the nine get copyright um, if there's some music on there. Um, so yeah, um, as I say, that was just changing the capacitors, new electrolytics. Um, I haven't looked at the valves yet. What the you know what they're like. It's very often this EEC eighty five um, goes a bit uh, loses emission, so you don't get such good FM. But it it looks as though we've got quite reasonable. Let's just get it go up. But there is a, a minority view which came to me, which is that I don't like this organisation. I don't agree with what it's doing. Uh, I don't think that to um, a broad, non-democratic, Europe-wide organisation is the right thing to be doing. And that's what it, the effect that it had on me. Slightly. But is it uh, what your we former now? bosses has told us? I saw no trace of serious Euroscepticism little bit of distortion there what I was trying to say but there we go it's early days yet um, so there we go um, we go kid needs something to keep him busy when a festive board game or two is on the cards for gifts for all your Christmases say hello to very pay choose pay no pay later or pay over three months and pay no interest shop toys at very.co.uk So there we go, I'll um, switch off uh, before, as I say. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. As I say, um, it's all recapped, as I say. I think you can see there the capacitors that, um, let's, let me, perhaps you can't, because if I turn it round a bit more, you perhaps can. The, the capacitors are there, um, what I've taken out the set. And it's quite nice and tidy under there. I'm, I'm pleased with it. And um, it seems to be working to a degree um you know i think it needs a slight bit of um, tweaking here and there but um i might try and clean some of this um mess off here before i put it back in the cabinet but that's the um next move i'm gonna i'm not gonna do a major refurb on the cabinet like i say um i'll wash the plastic front and give it a really good clean up um and polish the existing um, high gloss finish and see what we can do with it it's got quite a few scrapes and scratches in it
but I'm not too fussed about that. Um, you know, as I say, I think with the front plastic um, cleaned up, I have cleaned. One has to be very careful um, with the dial glasses. I have cleaned that up today, um, and obviously, never really. Or if you do decide to try and clean the back side where the where the gold relief writing is, do a little test area because the number of people I've known that have got a damp cloth or some sort of cleaning fluid thinking, oh right, let's clean this and they've took all the lettering um, off there and it's, um, I mean, that's a, the crucial piece of the wireless really, isn't it? The um, So one has to be very careful with these and um, I think it needs a little bit of a, attention um, with the rubber how it fits on with the rubber strips but we can sort that out um obviously it, you know fits back on uh something like and i think that has to go in there doesn't it and, and it drops down it has to go that's it and it drops down at the side there we go like so um probably as well to safe as to leave that on there tonight um and i think that looks really good it's it's a lovely um they were lovely designed. I love the colours, the black, the gold and the cream with the brown stripes on the plastic front. So we will come and have a look when it's all back together. And um, I will do a little bit of video probably of me cleaning the cabinet and etc. So um, there we go. Really delighted at that, as I say. Um, so um, I will add any more on to this video. I know it's getting far too long and I've had to cut it back, but... Um, um, I will keep adding little bits on um, and put it all together rather than split it into two or three videos.
Uh, so there we go, a little bit of an end uh, video clip just to show you um, the set looking quite magnificent I think um, with the plastic front as I say all washed, cleaned up, polished um, I found a couple of replacement um, push buttons there not quite the same as I say it was missing two of the original Blaupunkt ones uh, those come off a, a similar telefunk um, uh, telefunk, um, yeah, telephone can set that, that got broke that um, uh, somebody bought and the, the dial glass got broke in delivery and so they gave it to me and so it's always handy there you go to keep the parts so the couple of replacement which they look okay and I'll always see if I can find some of those the case isn't bad it's still got its scratch marks on but it's polished up quite nicely and um, I'm delighted. Um, I mean, I think there is one or two tired valves in the set, to be absolutely honest. Um, I've done a little bit more tweaking with it. But I don't like being moved. But I have grown them from seed. And people have given me seed, and I've grown them from seed very successfully. I've planted them out, and they've just died. So I just wonder if you could give me some tips okay. on how to get them going. Well, let's see, Pepper, if we can. Matt, tell us a bit about dioramas, if we're not familiar with them. So they have... Uh, long sword-shaped leaves that uh, form a, a clump um, and then as Pippa's just described they have this beautiful arching almost filament. I mean there's plenty of volume there um, for sure. Um, as I say I think the, is it the EF89 on the, the medium wave is certainly slightly not not so, um, it always throws me because you've got two tuners on these Perhaps I've got the wrong one, have I? Heads it to Erdegaard, nods it down to White. White looking for Saka. Saka's away here. Now, can he finish this one off? Edge of the box, gets a little nudge from Salas, who is off balance, and the referee is giving the free kick the other way and says that Bakayo Saka has simulated a potential foul there, and he is booked for diving. So that's obviously five live. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it does it does pick all the major stations up. But I think it, you know, um, something I should probably look at in time is you know I might treat it to one or two new valves. Um, but I think it's a very attractive set. You know, I mean it's it's quite big. <laughs> but considering it's what um, 65 years old, 1957, of course, you, you tend to forget how old. You know, um, let's go back to. When the weather is really kind to the plant, and as soon as there's the first sniff of a cold breeze, yeah, take in. it back into the shelter. You could actually put them on a pop trolley, you know, mm -hmm. with four wheels, yeah. and then you could wheel them around. Yeah. So, you know, yes. Yes. Wheel them in <laughs> and out <laughs> and around. It's a full time job, <laughs> And also, uh, what I would say is uh, you could get really kind of hippie. my skateboard until he broke it <laughs> he used my skateboard to uh, which is the perfect vehicle to transport super large pots across as long as you're not going across gravel so <laughs> we go particularly if you're on the other end yeah exactly that's a long well, way a radio for, to try, but maybe not um, as well itself, so. but not. if you'd like to contact us with any gardening related questions it's very easy to get in touch you can email gqt at bbc.co.uk or you'll find us on twitter at bbc gqt way that you um, you expect them to deliver. So with that in mind, Kirsty, what ideas would you have? Well, you've already got lovely structure there with these birch trees. So that's the I would just say cabinet. I would suggest some um, plants. So it looks, that, it looks quite passable, really. Now it's had a really... Um, bit of compost, get that down, and that will really it down a bit. Plant. It's had a good, really deep polish. You know, I've polished it many times. And um, there we go. I don't know if you'll see that side. And um, if we just pull the light off for a minute, I don't know how you'll see. I mean, it looks very nice, you know, with the dial lit up and all cleaned up. 
and I'm delighted with it. Um, one or two more things that you know to think about doing to it. It's not you know I'm not going to say it's finished. Um, you know you can go on indefinitely with these sets. Um, you know perhaps some people would rather like to strip but strip the you know the cabinet down, but I don't. I, I try and like to keep them as original as possible. It is all you could have a carpet of pink basically in the middle. So um, there we go. I think it's a really quite attractive set, and I'm you know delighted that I um, um, took the trouble for a few hours. I mean, I think if I said that was two two and a half hours, and then perhaps a little bit of work cleaning up as well. Um, those are the capacitors down there that I've taken out of the set. Um, so I left some, um, perhaps, you know, there again, others might have re re um, removed everyone's, but I'm a little bit, you know, don't, if, if it's the old saying, if it, if it ain't break, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But um, I took the ones that were crucial that I thought to the set in making it function as it should. Um, so um, there we go, uh, a 65 year old uh, Blaupunkt Sultan I think it's the 2023 model uh, 3D. Um, so yeah, I'm delighted with it. And then great big um, cordate heart-shaped leaves, um, which which emerge. You know, I'm, I wish I could show you some music, but um, I get copyrighted for my old um, BBC programmes that I post. As you know, I'm interested in old recordings of um, programmes as well. Um, so, uh, so I like to keep these videos free of anything um, copyright. Um, I get enough copyright strikes for those. Um, so yeah, I'm delighted. And I say to think it was uh, hard, but had been put in a skip, and then somebody thought that they might like to pass it on to me, which um, so it's brought it back to life. I fixed the foot, by the way. I did um, uh, re-screw. It was the foot that had gone very loose on one side believe it or believe it not was only tacked on with very little rusty old tacks um so i drilled um you know drilled it and put a couple of um you know small self tapping screws in there and um quite impressed it's got a in the feet it's got a groove cut out with some nice felt in there and that was all loose so i've actually stuck that back in there as well so it doesn't scratch your best sideboard when you put it on or wherever you decide to put it so there we go hope you might have enjoyed this video and that's another radio save or wireless or um so um there we go so as always many thanks for watching the video please do like comment and um, please do think about subscribing it does help us and um, i love getting your comments and as i've always say i will try and answer them all um so thank you again and um, i hope you like this little video something a little bit different again and um, until next time my best wishes and bye for now